I work for a telecoms company called Alcatel Lucent. Uh, it's just recently been taken over by Nokia. Um, I work in the submarine networks department, so we actually work uh, with the installation of fiber optic cables all over the world, subsea, not on submarines which is <laughs> what I get asked a lot. Are you on a submarine every day? No, no submarines, but they are subsea cables and we install them and try to win contracts all over the world. Uh, but how did I get there? It wasn't really something that I always wanted to do. Um, I graduated uh, when, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was, felt a lot of pressure in my final year, which maybe you feel as well, to apply to a lot of um, graduate schemes. Uh, for me, when I was looking at the graduate schemes, unless it was HR or financial services, I didn't feel there was really anything that stood out to me. Um, none of those things were things I was interested in, but everyone was going, how many have you applied to? I've got this assessment centre, and I felt a lot of pressure to do, do those applications. And in, in the end, I decided not to, because they took up a lot of time, and I decided to focus more on, on my final year itself and on my studies. Um, when I finished, uh, I was actually offered a job at the university by my dissertation supervisor. And I worked with her on some research um, at, for about six months. Um, and I was working with the linguistics department and the psychology department. And uh, from that, uh, they offered me, or they tried to encourage me to, to consider doing a PhD with them. Um, at that point, it was, it was a bit worrying because it was interesting and I really liked the research. It taught me a lot is probably one of the reasons I got my job now, but it wasn't what I wanted to do and I felt like I was getting stuck in academia and it wasn't something that I had ever wanted to do. Um, but when you have no other alternative, it is tempting to take something rather than nothing. But I decided it was better to see what I could do that I actually wanted and I left the research uh, after about six months and I was unemployed. So you take an option of unemployment over something where you're getting paid and you're doing something interesting. And I was unemployed for two months and it is hard. Um, but if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't be working where I want to now. Um, I got a lot of pressure at home, suggestions for every job you could think of <laughs> um, every day. And it is quite hard <laughs> to say, that's not what I want to do. Uh, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? But if, if you just take your time and think about what you want to do. At university, I really in enjoyed studying communication and then in my final year I focused more on telecommunication and internet communication and that was one of the things that I was most interested in and so I decided well the telecoms industry is only growing every year it's only developing every year I might as well apply to something in telecoms I didn't know what at all uh, and I applied to agencies so agencies are definitely a really great way of even just seeing the range of jobs out there uh, keep an open mind um, when the agency rep phoned me up uh, to discuss the job I'm in now, he said, this is really random <laughs> and you might not want to do it, but just give it a go. And it, it was, I felt very underqualified. I didn't think I would get it. Um, it was en engineering, but it was really just a job title. Um, and I went to the interview and they really were just looking for somebody who could analyze information, do research. So the research job had helped me out there. Um, give presentations confidently uh, and was willing to learn something new and difficult but could pick it up quickly. Um, one of the other attractions of the job is, is global travel. Uh, I've been there nearly three years. I've been to every continent except Antarctica, <laughs> um, including places like Alaska, Uruguay. I was in Jakarta for 24 hours uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so it is crazy. It's a lot of travel but it's very interesting, you, you kind of get to see the world a bit, um, but it's not really the world, it's more hotels. <laughs> <laughs> hotels and offices. Um, so when I took the job, I wasn't sure what, what it would develop into. I worked in a team that was very junior, everyone was graduates. Um, I tried to pick it up as quickly as I could. We had to learn a lot of new skills, um, but I thought I'd talk quickly about um, the interview process. I've now taken over management of my team um, my manager is on maternity leave and they offered me the management and I was a bit taken aback because I'd only been there two and a half years. Um, there's a team of five, so I'm managing a couple of people who are older than me, which is a bit intimidating as well. But I took the, the opportunity because it was a bit of a challenge um, and I've been involved in the interview 
interviewing for the three people we've hired recently. Um, I would say it sounds like a cliche, but having a good CV really does stand out. The amount that we throw out just from looking at it, even on the first page, is insane. So it just really try and make sure that you've got the key points you want to highlight, any gaps. We sometimes will ask for clarifications on the gaps, but only if your CV is outstanding in every other part. If you've got a gap, then you're pretty much going to have your CV in the bin. Um, so even if you've just been traveling, just say where you've been, put, put that you've been somewhere and doing something rather than just sitting at home doing nothing. Um, and the other thing is when you're in the interview, just, just come in and try. The best advice I got was just act as if you've already got the job. Not overly arrogant, but it will relax you. Um, and you can talk about yourself, talk, talk enthusiastically about the opportunities that you want in the next two, three years. Um, and that's really the best advice I can give you. I'll be around if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.